But I did find myself looking at a characteristically petulant tweet from Donald Trump yesterday, who was essentially claiming that if he was still president of America, he would have had a better seat at Her Majesty's funeral. What kind of a brain goes to a place like that on a day like that is something that we will have to puzzle over for days, years, months to come. But it is truly breathtaking that he'd be sitting there thinking about the fact that he would have barged his way through protocol and, and sat at the front or sat nearer the front, probably pushed the prince or a duke out of the way in order to park his flabby bottom on a, on a bench he had no business being on and then just refusing to move while staring ahead into the middle distance. And, and uh, listen, if we didn't have a monarchy, we wouldn't necessarily have a president as obnoxious and as unsuitable as Donald Trump. But we wouldn't have somebody who had spent their entire life preparing for the role. And it is a role. It is a role. And King Charles, which sounded almost normal then, coming out of my mouth, uh, not completely normal yet, still a little bit uh, unfamiliar, but King Charles very much fits that bill. He has spent his entire life being prepared for this role. And, and that's possibly a fairly good way. It may not be the best way. There you go. Eight minutes after 10, I've arrived at my conclusion. I'm pretty sure it's not the worst way to select a head of state. Am I getting old? Am I still a little bit um, softened up? By events yesterday, when I realised where the cortege would be passing, I, I, I got out. I went, I turned the telly off and went out with my daughters uh, to, to watch it. My wife was covering the events for Australian television, so she was in the heart of it for, for, for the entire duration. But my daughters, who are not sort of, you know, particularly uh, like most of their generation, the royal family hasn't figured particularly large in their thinking, but we were all up for it, got there. And that was incredible. I don't know if you're familiar with the Great West Road. It would have been the main route into and out of London before the M4 was built. And it, it, it had a kind of uh, almost a mystical status in the 1950s and the 1960s because it had these massive buildings, these Art Deco buildings, Gillette Corner. I think Steve Allen worked there in, in the Biscuits Factory, United Biscuits Factory. It had these huge... It felt a little bit like the future for a long time, the Great West Road. It has an iconic status. And, of course, then the motorway was built and it began to feel very quickly like the past. Not least because it, for large bits of it, the motorway goes above it on a flyover. So it's almost as if it's been superseded both physically and historically by, by the motorway. But the funeral cortege made its way up the old road, up the Great West Road. And when I got there, when I got to the, 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 the junction, um, it was rammed. It was three or four people deep as far as the eye could see. So looking right back into central London and then looking left over the horizon. And I think it stayed like that, ju judging from the television pictures, pretty much all the way to Windsor. A couple of exceptions, but that, that was just very special. And it was a community. It was a feeling of community. Um, already Sam is sending me rather pertinent Thomas Paine quotes. A hereditary monarch is absurd as, a position, as absurd a position as a hereditary doctor or a hereditary mathematician. Big fan of Thomas Paine, Sam, but none of us are right about everything. And so that sense of, of people weren't all there to bend the knee or wave the flag. They were there to witness history. And we did witness history. But whether you like that description or not, you can't really argue with it. We witnessed history. Whether you like the system that renders it history is not relevant to the question of whether or not it is history. It is history. And, and we witnessed it. And then earlier this morning, looking at the newspapers, looking at Again, the Telegraph particularly choosing to put King Charles on the front page as a mark of what is to come rather than what has passed. And I did sort of think this isn't the worst way to do it, is it? 0345 606 so when I turned to another newspaper and, and read the headline, we're preparing to stage protests at the coronation. Now is the time to be brave. I read it in a slightly different way, perhaps, than I would have done a few years ago. Uh, in, in the late summer sun, the newly anointed King Charles walked through Cardiff, shaking hands and greeting people who had come out to welcome him. Amid the cheers, one man shouted for his attention. Um, Charles, while we struggle to heat our homes, we have to pay for your parade. The taxpayers pay £100 million for you, and for what? Um, before the man could finish speaking, a security guard had intervened, and the king had turned his back to greet 
well-wishers. But the Cardiff protester, alongside a handful of protests elsewhere in the country, are, I think, going to form a more vocal opposition to the monarchy than perhaps we've ever seen before in this country. Fair play, I think, to Republic, the anti-monarchy campaign group, who suspended all public comments briefly as a mark of respect for the Queen, but have now, with the proclamation of King Charles, started again in earnest. Their chief executive told the newspaper, the accession is a game changer. For most people, the Queen was the monarchy and the monarchy was the Queen. I think there's some truth in that. And whether or not King Charles becomes the monarchy and the monarchy becomes King Charles, only time will tell. But he has spent his entire life in preparation for his role. He has spent his entire life watching a paragon of monarchy. Again, you know, I'm not going to spend the whole hour bending over backwards to to accommodate your Republican feelings. But again, don't judge the Queen, the late Queen, by what you think about the existence of a monarchy. Judge her by her actions, her behaviour, her conduct, her reign. I don't think it's going to get much better than that. I don't think it could have got much better than that. that again, absolutely no, no, nobody is perfect. But it, it, it is an almost masterclass in monarchy. And it means that our new head of state has not only spent his entire life in preparation for the role, but has also had quite possibly the, the finest teacher, the finest... Um, uh, inspiration, the finest mentor, the finest role model it would have been possible for any head of state to have. And if Charles doesn't turn out to be the monarch that his mother was, then his son also will have seen his grandmother for for 40 odd years performing her duties in a way that is, you know, about as good as it gets. So so there it is. You can disagree with me as strongly as you like today. I, I wasn't in the mood. I didn't feel it would have been right to, to give vent to too much of this sort of thinking last week, although we took a rather brilliant call from Liverpool um, uh, who, who managed to uh, tick most of these boxes without being gratuitously offensive. Today we can actually have a proper set two about it, if you like, a proper Barney. 03456060973 is the number you need. Have you changed a bit? Have you you warmed to the concept of monarchy? The Republican campaign groups seem to be betting on the opposite happening, that actually um, uh, the the Queen's departure from the stage will dilute people's enthusiasm for the entire institution. I find myself, and I'm only one person, I find myself currently in a mildly opposite position to that. I find myself thinking more warmly about the concept of monarchy, perhaps because of how Donald Trump has changed my views on democracy. But I find myself thinking more warmly about the concept of a British monarchy than I think I have done at any other point in my life. It might change. It might have disappeared by tea time. It might go out of the studio door with the first caller to the programme this morning. But if you're similar to me, let's talk it through. And if you're absolutely persuaded that I'm talking... Even more bilge than usual. Let's talk that through as well. Either way, the number you need is 03456060973. Hit the numbers now. You will get through.